Last week, I let off the show uh, with news on the death of Big Van Vader. Uh, unfortunately, there was another death in the wrestling world this past week, the death of Matt Capitelli at age 38. Uh, passed away after his second battle with brain cancer. His wife, Lindsay, confirmed the news in a post on her Facebook page. Uh, Capitelli, he was one of the winners from Season 3 of Tough Enough back when the show was still on MTV. It was actually him and John Hennigan was the other winner, Johnny, Johnny Mundo from Lucha Underground. And, you know, people think about that Tough Enough season, they think of Matt Capitelli, and they think of that infamous incident with Bob Holly. Bob was brought in, um, I think he was only brought in for the one episode. And, you know, he was in the ring with Matt, and he stiffed him, and he beat him up, and he bloodied his lip, and he just really kicked the crap out of him. Uh, now, Bob, he gave his side of that whole story in his book. He also talked about it on my show. When I had him on the sound off a few years ago, still maybe the best interview I've ever done with a wrestler. And I asked him about that, and we went into it, and he gave his side of the story. I don't really think this is the time or place. I've already talked about this before anyway, but uh, he did make some appearances. Uh, Matt did on WWE television. He and Hennigan even had a match on Raw uh, right after they won that season of Tough Enough and uh, Tommy Dreamer came out and, you know, beat the hell out of him with a kendo stick, hit him both in the head. But uh, he spent most of his time down in, in OVW. Uh, he had a lot of success down there. He became OVW heavyweight champion. Paul Heyman was also writing television for OVW around that time that uh, Capitelli was, was on top there, so to speak. Uh, I can remember reading about some of the really hot angles that Heyman booked involving uh, Matt, and I think it was uh, Johnny Jeter, I believe. Uh, some just really intense stuff, and people were raving about it and how realistic it was, and uh, Heyman didn't have a terribly long run as a, as the uh, you know head writer, I think is what his position was down there in OVW, but apparently he left quite the impression for the time that he was, and Matt was definitely part of that. But he was actually about to be called up to the main roster as a tag team with The Miz. They were going to come up as a tag team on TV called Reality Check. Uh, Miz talked about it on his Instagram. They were going to come up together. And then Miz got a call from Matt saying that he had um, brain cancer. He was diagnosed with brain cancer. And that obviously changed plans. And what happened is that he suffered a really bad concussion. And so he had been injured. I think he maybe had a broken ankle. He had come back and... Uh, sometime right after he had come back, uh, is when he got, uh, hit right in the back of the head. I mean, he suffered a, a blow to the head from Brian Cage at an OVW show. And I'm not sure if that's the same Brian Cage that's now in Lucha Underground. It could be a different one. I, I don't, I just don't know. Um, but I do know that he got nailed really hard. Knocked him out legit. He took a face plant on the mat. It was very scary. You can actually find the footage if you look around for it online. And it turned out to be a blessing in disguise because when he went to the hospital, they discovered that he had a small brain tumor. He he probably never would have known uh, until it was really too late, and maybe they wouldn't have been able to do anything for him. Um, but I guess he was not really symptomatic, or maybe if he was, he just wasn't putting two and two together. And only because he suffered the concussion and, and, and got hit in the back of the head did he even go to the hospital and find out. Uh, that he had a brain tumor, so he had to, you know, surrender the OVW title, he came out, he gave this great emotional speech, which somebody just re-uploaded online the other day, it's about 12-15 minutes long, uh, it's Matt in the ring, all the other wrestlers are surrounding the ring, it's, it's pretty heavy stuff, and, you know, he just talked about how I gotta do what I gotta do now. I have to get better. I have to, you know, step away from the ring and undergo treatment and figure out what my plan is. And uh, he went into remission the following year in 2007. He went into remission. He was in remission for a decade before the brain cancer came back. This time though, it was diagnosed as a uh, grade four glioblastoma, which is just, it's the deadliest form of brain cancer that there is. Glioblastoma is a death sentence. Uh, only 5% of people diagnosed with it survive uh, another five years. I mean, there's been some, you know, notable uh, political figures. I think Ted Kennedy had a glioblastoma. John McCain right now, he has uh, a grade 4 glioblastoma. Uh, I know my boss at work was telling me once about a family member <clears throat> who was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Turned out to be glioblastoma. Uh, I don't even know if they lasted a year. So it's a, it's a particularly vile, nasty 
form of cancer. Not that any form of cancer isn't nasty and vile and disgusting and should be eradicated from the earth. Uh, but this one is is pretty much one of the worst. And he had surgery. They were only able to get 90% of the tumor removed. His wife posted a blog in May, only a couple of months ago, not even, uh, saying that they were, in, you know, in consultation with his doctors, they had decided that they were going to discontinue his treatments because they just weren't working anymore. And, you know, when you're that sick and you're terminal, you get to a point where it is more important to make sure that the person is as comfortable as possible they call it palliative care because you, you just get to a point where frankly it's almost inhumane to continue treating something that is untreatable and anybody who has had any sort of serious illness anybody that has had to deal with cancer or has had a family member or a friend or somebody they know go through whatever type of cancer it is and go through radiation and chemo and all that treatment you know as well as i do and as well as anybody else does that a lot of the time the real uh, bad stuff doesn't even come so much from the cancer or the tumor. It comes from the treatment. The treatment beats the hell out of you and makes you sicker and sicker. And it's just a game. It's, it's like a game that you play, right? You're, you're definitely, um, I mean, I hate to call it a game, but it's not a game per se. But it's almost like you're, you're just taking a gamble here. You know, you want to get better. You want to feel better. You want to live. And so you, you do what you feel you need to do. Uh, but sometimes you got to weigh your options and say, look at, you know, what kind of life am I going to live if they're telling me that it's only going to do so much, but it's going to make me so much sicker. So like when I, I went and read that blog post and it just struck a chord with me because, you know, in my family, I've had a lot of experience dealing with this sort of thing. And it's so true. Uh, it's not an easy decision to make, but you just get to that point where you gotta, you gotta make it, you gotta make the tough choices. And, um, you know, I can't imagine what that whole family has been through, uh, everything that uh, Matt had to go through. You read his story, and it's, it's, it's almost it's angering. It's depressing. It's very sad. It it makes you very, um, very frustrated. You know why? Why does something like that have to happen? There really is no, um, there really is no answer. Now I don't know. You know, in the end, with Matt, he was clearly somebody. The thing that struck me about him is, you know, you hear nothing but positive stories from people in wrestling who knew him or who worked with him in OVW, who met him. I haven't heard one person say one bad word about this guy. Not one. Uh, and it's very likely that he would have gone on to become a very big star in the business. You can never know. You can never be sure. Uh, maybe he would have suffered some other kind of injury, but he was he was primed to be a very big star in wrestling. He had enough talent, he was young enough, he was all but guaranteed to be a big name uh, right now, had he not gotten sick. And the thing about him that strikes me, you read all these stories now, and I would periodically read stories about him over the years, the local news, I think in Louisville would do some, some news segments and follow him around, and you can see how much he had deteriorated, but he was still, you know, being active and working out, and he was a trainer, I think, over at OVW, and the thing about him that really struck me was just his positive attitude. Uh, now, I know he relied a lot on his faith. He was a very, you know, religious person, and, and that had a lot to do with it. But he was just a very positive person throughout this entire ordeal, going back to 2006, I guess it would have been, when he was first diagnosed. Any interview I ever saw this guy give, he was always trying to look at the positive side of things, no matter how terrifying the news was. And he knew... All right, I'm going to have to have brain surgery, and I'm going to have to go through this, and I'm going to have to go through that, and basically give up my entire life. And this guy was, he was keeping a positive outlook on everything, and it's not easy to do. It is not an easy thing to do, um, you know, seeing what cancer can do to somebody. It's very, very hard to keep a positive attitude, and I just don't see how you can read up on this guy's story and watch him and not look at him as some kind of an inspiration. You know, he's braver than I think a lot of people would be. I think he's a hell of a lot braver than I would be if I ever found myself in that same situation. And so I think people can look to this person here as an example. And, and I hope none of you ever have to go through the hell that he did. But you look at him as an example of how to deal with a situation like that, right? You deal with it head on. You don't, you don't pull the whole woe is me, why me. It's very easy to do that. I think we all do that sometimes. And this guy didn't do that. And I think it's very unfair what happened to him. But for a guy who never got his big break in the wrestling business, you look at the outpouring of tweets 
and messages from wrestlers inside and outside WWE. Announcers, wrestlers, you know, promoters, everybody had something to say about Matt Capitelli this week. And you look at that and you say, man, you know, for a guy that never, quote, made it to the main roster and never made it to prime time, he sure did leave an impression on an awful lot of people. And uh, he gave this quote to WWE.com. They did an interview with him last year. And I think this sums him up pretty well. This is what he said. This was his message to others. He said, you have to fight for what you want. Life is the most precious gift that we're given. If I can inspire others to not give up on the life they've been blessed to have, that's what I'm trying to spread. Hope. It's not time to crawl up in a hole and feel bad for myself and get down. It's time for me to stand up and share my struggles publicly so that others can draw strength and hope from me. That way I'm giving back and turning what I've been given in life into a positive and helping somebody along the way. Uh, and I think that if ever there was somebody who deserved that Warrior Award they love to tout and give out every single year at the Hall of Fame, I think it's Matt Capitelli.